Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. So we're out here today in the Jungle Swamp Village site, which isn't looking much like a village yet, but one of the crucial components of a village has now been gathered. As you can see from these stone pods littering the landscape right now, there's one over there, there's one here, and two over there. I have been catching myself some zombie villagers, and I have had some pretty decent success here. I've actually seen more spider jockeys in the last day or so than I have villagers, because I've been basically flying up into the sky and then coming back down to respawn mobs at ground level to see if we can churn through a few hostile mob spawn cycles until we get ourselves zombie villagers. And that has proved relatively effective, but in the long run, if you're starting a village from scratch yourself, you might want to use existing villagers either from your own villager breeder that you had before 1.14 or bringing them over from a regular village that's generated out there in the world. The main reason I've been curing zombie villagers though is so we can get a look at the unique costumes that villagers will have if they are spawned originally in a jungle or a swamp biome. They don't change costumes when you move them from village to village, they generate with a costume and that is the one they keep for life. So introducing villager number one. Whoa, sorry, didn't mean to hit you there with a the pickaxe. Pickaxe is swinging a little bit. <laughs> this, this is our swamp villager costume. He's got some purple sleeves, he's got some interesting hair. Like, the villagers don't normally have hair, so I rather think that is actually meant to be like a, a piece of swamp-like algae or something that's just been like draped over his head all casually. Maybe he's kind of growing vines on him or something. But anyway, he's got a torch in there with him so that nothing will potentially spawn and kill him. And that is villager number one. He is going to be our first test subject. Now over here in these other pods on this side, we have two other swamp villagers who I am keeping. Oh, let me open this on a, a sideways angle. There we go. I'm keeping these guys as backups because I think it's probably going to be a good idea to have a few of these guys around just in case one of them kicks the bucket. Villages are fragile things and a single zombie getting in here outside of my control or a pillager patrol randomly spawning, even though once we start a village over here they shouldn't randomly spawn anywhere near here, but the villagers could potentially be under threat and as such I want to make sure we have a couple of backups. So the two guys in the pods over there are also villagers that spawned in this swamp area and they have been cured. Now, this one over here is very special compared to the other three because this one over here is a jungle villager. It is a villager that we have gotten from the jungle biome around here. And I wanted to get two of each, but for whatever reason, they just weren't really spawning in this jungle area. They were probably spawning further out into the dense jungle where I couldn't reach. But over here in this pod, sounding no different, but looking very different, we have a jungle villager. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. What's up? Hope you're having a good time in here. I think I might have just broken the block that had the torch on it, so better make sure we replace that. And uh, I think we're going to put you back in the box for a second, because the first thing I want to do, as you can see, the sun is going down. The first thing I want to do is establish a safe perimeter around the area where we're going to be making a village. And it's going to be quite a wide perimeter, because I do want to make this into something resembling an actual village in the long term. I want to make houses for them eventually, and at least kind of dabble in the stuff that makes a village look like a village. But for now, I think what we really need to do is get a perimeter wall around here so that we can conduct these village experiments without the fear of mobs potentially damaging them. Also, I might remove the campfire in the fullness of time because I can totally imagine a villager just wandering up over this campfire, taking a couple of like points of damage and then dying very, very easily. So maybe we should take care of that and remove the campfire or, or, or cordon this off somehow from the villagers themselves, which is a shame really because I quite like the campfire here. I think it's made a, a nice feature of our jungle campsite. But anyway, we're going to be uh, doing a, a quick perimeter wall here in a second. One other thing that it is worth noting about these villagers is that they are all currently unemployed. As soon as you cure them from a zombie villager, even when that zombie villager seems to have some sort of profession, they will be unemployed villagers. Unless there are beds and workstations around for them to immediately take up a job, they are not going to have any kind of trades for you straight away. So what we're going to be looking into over this next week or so is how to manipulate the trades for these villagers so that they will each end up with 
a different trait. And once we start breeding them, we're going to have a whole variety of villagers. The goal here is to get one villager of every profession from each of the two biomes. So you guys can see the full range of costumes so that we can get a decent range of trades. And then after that, we can potentially look into breeding a few more and manipulating trades to the point where we can get an easy mending book, for example. But that's a few steps down the line and probably a few videos into the week. For now, I think it's time to build a perimeter wall and I feel like doing that in the form of a time lapse. Welcome back, folks. Hope you enjoyed the time lapse. Look what I have found. While I was lighting the area up, a couple of things were still spawning in the perimeter we've now created using all of these jungle logs, and we got ourselves a zombie villager. And since I haven't done any of the curing of these new zombie villagers on camera, I figured I would probably do that for you guys right now. So this guy looks like a librarian right now. He's uh, You can't really tell because he's wearing the gold helmet, but he is balancing a book on his head. That's the bookmark of it right there. He's got his lovely little reading glasses. And for all intents and purposes, this is a zombie villager librarian who has spawned here in the jungle biome, hence the jungle outfit he seems to be wearing. Now, the problem is when we end up curing this guy, he's going to go back to being an unemployed villager, which I'll demonstrate shortly once I have found all of the ingredients I need 
in here. Yes, there we go. Okay, I have one more splash potion of weakness and golden apples. So we're going to make this one count, folks. We are going to splash this guy and cure him, and he is going to be villager number five. Fantastic. Now, my particles are on minimal right now because I was at my guardian farm mending my tools, but there you go. You can see the healing particles at work, and I'm going to pop a torch in there with this guy. I think I already did that, <laughs> and make sure that he is fully enclosed because in the healing process remember zombies can still attack other zombie villagers that are in the curing process and you might not end up with a zombie villager at the end of the day so while this guy is hanging around he isn't holding any items or anything so he is potentially going to despawn if i step too far away rather than waste a name tag on him i'm just going to hang out here until he's done curing and we'll come back to see him fully cured and a little bit less armored there we go, folks. Sounds like he just healed up. I've been roasting some potatoes around the campfire because I figured if we were going to be spending a decent amount of time out here away from my chicken cooker, I should probably have a renewable source of food. And these campfires are really great for doing this. <laughs> also, if we've got a little potato harvest going on over here. Oh, I missed a couple in the water over there. If we convert one of these villagers into a farmer, we're going to have something instant to trade, provided that they trade potatoes. So that's kind of worth doing. Now let's open this guy up. And as you can see, he's wearing wearing a fancy jungle jacket, but he does not seem to have any profession anymore. He doesn't have the librarian job that he had when we cured him. So I'm going to leave this guy cooped up in here for now while I continue to light up the rest of this area, which I was going to do as the rest of that time lapse, but I figured we may as well jump back in and deal with this guy. It's also a lot easier to light the area up whilst the sun is down because you can see the darker areas a little bit better. During the day, it's all very evenly lit, but during the night, it is slightly easier to see where the dark spots are and all it would take would be one zombie or baby zombie to rush in here and attack some of the villagers we've got a hundred percent conversion rate from villager back to zombie villager on hard mode so it would be easy enough for them to come in and basically ruin all of the hard work i plan to put into this place so hopefully we can get this whole area lit up properly we can have a nice new village and then we can let these guys out and then we'll be able to try a few experiments with breeding and with you know assigning professions to them and that kind of stuff so i'm going to continue lighting the place up i'm going to do the rest of it off camera for the moment but i will see you guys on the other side okay the moon is setting over there on the horizon and i think fingers crossed i have got this whole place lit up there are still a couple of caves around here that are occasionally producing zombie noises and the jungle on this side is a little bit active but hopefully it should not be active with the kind of stuff that can get over the walls and attack the villagers. Now remember, zombies and pillagers are the only things that we really need to be worried about here. If a spider gets over the wall, sure it's going to attack me, but it's probably not going to do any damage to the villagers themselves. So hopefully we shouldn't have to worry about too much. I've got lanterns around a lot of the perimeter, but I didn't bring too many of those. So what I've opted for instead is the jungle fences on the tops of there in a kind of tiki torch formation, I guess. And of the rest of this, of course, is going to be ugly torch spam for a little while. But hopefully we might have the opportunity to do something about that in future. And some people have suggested that maybe we should develop this into a full on stylized village in the fullness of time. That's going to be a secondary objective, though, because as I've been saying this whole time, we need to establish this as like a villager breeding colony and uh, sort out what the actual village mechanics are going to look like before we worry too much about building them houses and that kind of thing. But hopefully all of the areas under the trees are lit up well enough that they aren't going to spawn stuff. Everything over here should still be okay, give or take. I do need to just quickly run around the perimeter of this. Yeah, we've got some seven block light there, of course. Of course, my own base is like the least well protected area right now, but no, I think we've got it, got it covered at that point. Right, with the sun coming up over here, I think it is time to open up these boxes and I'm going to leave the campfire out as a test. If they immediately walk into the campfire, I'm going to tear the whole thing apart and just replace it with a torch and get a smoker or a furnace or something that I can actually use to cook food the regular way. But for now, it is time to actually break these guys out of their boxes and of course he immediately wanders off towards the campfire. I think he might be claiming my bed. He's definitely claiming my bed. Dang it. Okay, I, this is no longer my house. <laughs> of course. Of course. Right. Well, that makes a lot of sense for a start because villagers do need beds now. And as you can see from this one, 
they have this kind of sleeping behavior where they will sleep through the night and they need this in order to refresh trades in future, I believe. But we won't worry too much about that yet. Instead, there we go, he's hopped out of bed now. That officially means the sun has come up enough and it is a new day. Good morning. <laughs> hope you're doing okay. I hope everything is going well. It's time to let out some of your friends. And of course, the first thing he does is like decide to leap around on the vines. All right, the other jungle villager is over there in that box there, but maybe we should let out one of the swamp villagers first. Let's open this one up. Hello, my friends. Come on out. And uh, unfortunately, the bed has already been claimed. So I'm going to have to make another bed for you relatively soon. But let's just quickly make sure that this area here is adequately lit up as well. Of course, I'm tearing up the landscape, making sure that these guys have gotten out of the boxes and they're socializing on opposite sides of the fence. <laughs> That's adorable. That is actually part of what I wanted to do with this whole experiment and we're going to have two kind of uh two households both alike in dignity i suppose <laughs> and am amusingly enough i've already got some name tags prepared where this guy here is going to be named montague and this one over there is going to be named capulet and <laughs> these are going to be the montagues and the capulets so i've only got the two name tags but it's going to be useful to have those as our kind of test villagers i suppose our control villagers and the other three you know what we may as well break out the other three as well we might as well start off with a decent population as many villagers as we can because this is going to be quite a populous area after a while and we might as well at least start with a decent population to begin with so swamp village number two is out of the bag swamp village number three will be following along yes hello <laughs> welcome welcome to the family let's uh let's get you broken out of here this is going to be a nice wide open area for them to roam around so quite unlike the villager trading hall there you go they're meeting up already they're shaking hands if they had do they have hands? It's weird biological questions come up whenever you're dealing with villagers for any length of time. But last but not least, we have another jungle villager over here who this one is apparently yearning for, pining for. Oh, that's Capulet. Okay, so maybe this is, <laughs> maybe this one over here is Romeo. Let's, let's find out, I suppose. And hopefully this area should be well lit enough as well. I've tried to light all the far reaches of this area as best I can. But you'll notice that none of them, like I said, none of them have actual uh, vocations yet. None of them have professions. None of them are doing any kind of jobs. We will work on that. And that will probably be one of the things we do in just a second. Hopefully this guy will follow us though. Uh, <laughs> I think they're just going to kind of roam around as best they can until we put down stuff like workstations. Because workstations are an area that we know villagers will gravitate to. But I think for now, he'll probably try and find his way to an area that seems to have points of interest. And points of interest is a phrase you're going to be hearing quite a lot in these next few episodes. Because that is basically any object in the village that bears any kind of relationship to a villager's routine. Including beds, including workstations, including bells, and any anything else that counts as a meeting site. And I think the first thing to do is going to be to make them each... A bed and that might mean breaking this one so that if I, if I want to keep using that <laughs> then I might have to claim it as my own by breaking it and then replacing it when the others have claimed their beds now let's open up one of the boxes in here I think has some more cyan wool yes there it is okay so let's grab some logs out of here let's make some beds for them and beds as I said are an important part of a villagers routine now they need somewhere to sleep and they need somewhere to work so by placing the bed down over here we can pretty much guarantee that they will go to these beds during the night doesn't matter what kind of conditions the beds are in as long as they are accessible to the villagers they will sleep in them so we'll have a couple over here we'll put a couple uh, around the place later on but for now I think it's important that we just get down as many beds as possible and once there are more beds than there are villagers that is when you will start to notice villager breeding coming into effect so you might end up seeing a few heart particles. I will just check that my particles are still on. Good, they are. And yeah, you might find villager breeding particles like the, the love hearts and stuff start to appear above their heads once we place down a few more beds. Because the way villager breeding works now, if they see an additional bed, they think, oh wow, okay, a bed that needs to be filled. How about I make a baby and fill that bed up? So 
Who knows? They might be developing a relationship already. It's only day one. <laughs> this guy has decided to wander off and explore the obsidian cave over here, which uh, thankfully I seem to have lit up well enough as well. I'll just toss a couple of torches down in the corners just in case. Good stuff. All right. Well, maybe we should probably block this off a little bit better to make sure that they aren't wandering down here and getting lost too often because they seem to have taken a liking to the place. <laughs> and now that they are out of the boxes, we can take a proper look at their costumes for once. Now, the jungle villagers seem to have something like an ocelot pelt on them. They've got this animal skin kind of print to them, as well as the regular kind of sleeves, the brown sleeves that denote that this is just an unemployed villager and not a nitwit. We will probably be seeing nitwits popping up here and there, but if you see one with green sleeves, then that is probably a nitwit. So the jungle villagers are all going to follow this sort of template, but for now, this is what the unemployed jungle villagers look like. By contrast, our swamp villager friends have got these purple sleeves, they've got patches of moss, it seems like, on them, and if you take a look at the top of their head, you'll actually see that this looks more like a, a giant leaf or a lily pad that they've got attached to their heads, which separates them a little bit from the other villagers in that they've actually got something vaguely resembling hair, but I'm pretty sure that is just supposed to be a giant leaf. It seems like, if he'll let me take a look at it, I'm trying to run around this guy, <laughs> again, making myself dizzy. They've got a red mushroom, it looks like, attached to the back of their robes. There you go, we can see that from the back there. That's very cool, and that is the default costume for a swamp villager. And it looks like night is falling, so these five villagers will be trying to find their way to their beds. Now, of course, one of them has already taken up residence in my bed. This guy is having a little bit of trouble getting around the, the, uh, the tent poles of this kind of hut that I've set up. But it looks like the others have found their beds. Let's see if that fourth one comes in from further afield. He might be getting stuck somewhere, it's my only concern, so I do want to make sure that they all make it back to the beds. For all the extra sophistication that they've added into the villager AI, these guys are a little bit dopey. <laughs> I think this one might actually be trying to get to the other bed that's in there. If I break a couple of these trap doors maybe, maybe I can push you around the corner there. Oh, nope, looks like he's finding his way to a bed. Fantastic, okay. So my full collection of villagers is now going to be sleeping in their beds for the night. Wonderful. And they do tend to sleep on one side of the bed or the other, which is a little bit strange. I think they just kind of choose that position randomly. I don't think there's any significance to it, but for now, I think we can wish everybody a good night and get a good night's sleep. There we go. Good morning. Everyone's hopped out of beds, rise and shine, and... I think today you guys are going to get some jobs because the first thing they will do every morning is mill around and socialize, but after that they look for work. And right now, none of these guys have jobs. They're all a little bit aimless. So I think what we have to do is maybe set down a few workstations around here that these guys can be attracted to. Now let's see what we brought with us. I'm pretty sure I brought one of every type of workstation with me in here. So let's start with a farmer villager. Let's see who's going to be our farmer. I can pop the composter down over here by the crops and one of these guys, yes, there we go, one of the swamp villagers has just taken up the occupation of a farmer and that's Capulet. Now you'll notice right here that the trades already have a discount and that is because we have cured these villagers from a zombie villager state. They are automatically kind of grateful to us for that and they have reduced the prices of their base trades. So Capulet is now a farmer and you'll see that instead of like just completely changing the outfit what's happened is a few overlays have attached themselves to Capulet's outfit. We have a kind of gem down there that is currently a stony grey kind of colour. There is a pocket on the back as though that's somewhere for like keeping a farmer's tool of sorts and of course the trademark straw hat. So Capulet's farmer outfit has just been overlaid on top of the standard swamp villager outfit and we now have ourselves a farmer. And as a farmer, you'll find Capulet occasionally harvesting crops, much in the same way that farmers did before, but I think that is going to be happening less often than it used to. Farmers don't seem to just till farmland until it's done in the same way that they did. However, you may occasionally hear a composting noise happening over here, and I'm not certain if that means Capulet is using the composter automatically, but it does mean that the uh, the village workstation set up here is working. 
Now, you'll notice villagers don't stray too far away from their workstations. They will wander a little bit around here, and they will mingle around job sites, so the other villagers will kind of come to see Capulet as he is working. But then... If he gets more than about three or four blocks away from this workstation, he will find his way back. Oh, and he's just trampled one of the crops, so he's clearly not a very good farmer. Now, if we decide Capula is a real bad farmer and probably shouldn't be in the profession anymore, we can break this workstation block, and you'll notice that instantly the outfit changes back immediately from a farmer villager into an unemployed villager. Now, I think think I feel a little bit bad about that, so I'm going to pop that back down, and as you'll see, Capula has taken up the farmer profession again. This time, though, his trades are completely different. There are still discounts on beets, which is kind of not what I want right now, because we're not farming beets over here, but the trades have been re-rolled. Whilst a villager is a novice, you'll be able to do this as many times as you want. Before the trading level gets beyond the full kind of XP bar here, I think it is still possible to break and replace a workstation and the villager will just completely regenerate their first few traits meaning that if we take this away again and then pop it back down capulet becomes a, uh, a farmer once again and now as you can see the trades are completely different now we're looking at a wheat trade instead of the beet roots there is still a bread trade there but maybe we can try that one more time and see if we can get a trade for something like potatoes there we go wonderful we got potatoes and we got beetroot again well we have some potatoes around here so that should be just fine there we go he was harvesting some crops as well and villagers do still pick up food and probably will distribute it around the other villagers in the same way that they used to and it may be that the reason they're not breeding yet even though I put all of these beds down is that they still need a little bit of food oh looks like somebody did just step in the campfire okay well campfire is over then no more campfire for you <laughs> All right, maybe I'll put that up on the roof or somewhere that they can't get to it. But for now, it can probably just go in the shulker box. There we go. Campfires. Not a good idea around village sites. But as I was saying, it might be that the reason none of these guys have been breeding yet is because they still need food in them, their inventory in the same way that they used to for the old villager breeder designs. So while the farmer's job is, of course, to till the fields and get some of the crops on the go and will probably still function that way in the event that you want to put together an infinite villager breeder it's probably a good idea to oh there we go we've got the trade coming up <laughs> it's probably a good idea to throw a few crops around to the other villagers as well so let me hop up to some of these folks and see if they want a few potatoes there you go take those up into your inventory yep looks like you took those Montague can have a few as well, and you, unnamed Capulet, you can probably have a couple too. That's probably not quite enough potatoes to get them to breed just yet, but you never know. We will see. In the meantime, we could probably experiment with a couple more professions for these folks, so let's see what else we have got in the box of jobs. And as you will see, the sun is coming down, it's coming into the late afternoon phase of the day, and the farmer has left his position. They are no longer working, they are in the meeting, kind of afternoon, evening meeting position where they're just going to be walking around and gossiping with each other. But I think there is probably still time for one of them to accept a job. So let's put a lectern over here and see if any of these becomes a librarian, or maybe... We will have to wait. Nope, it looks like one of them. That's Montague. Montague the Librarian. What have you got for us? A luck of the sea trade? All right, maybe maybe we'll uh, re-roll that a couple more times. Wait a second. It looks like Montague is still a librarian, but then this guy has taken up a librarian trade as well. Interesting. I wonder if that's a little bit buggy right now. Maybe if I take away the lectern for long enough? Ah, I think I know what might be happening here. They become unemployed later in the day. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, we got another librarian over there as well. So how this actually seems to work is that they will detect workstations and check that their job has been kind of destroyed, I guess, uh, the following day when it's time to work. So in the meantime, we could make all of these librarians and see if they have any worthwhile traits. Like right now, because we've cured them all from zombie villagers, they are giving us some ludicrous discounts on the trades here. We could get an aqua affinity book for one emerald and a book right now which is a little bit excessive, but it seems like they're going to wait to realize that their professions have been taken away until the next working period. Okay, that's good to know. We're getting the hang of this now. Let's quickly check what our friend has in the way of trades. That's just paper and bookshelves. Okay, well, I've got a bit of sugarcane growing around here, so we should have plenty of paper to trade with our librarians. But now it looks like it's bedtime. Everyone's returning to the beds. I will quickly check around to make sure that our 
Last swamp villager makes it into his bed as well. Oh dear, he's found his way down into the only unlit cave in the area. Well, of course, it was bound to happen sooner or later, my friend. Do you want to, do you want to maybe leave? Do you want to try and get out of here if you could? There we go, I've made a nice little way for you to pathfind up, and it looks like the AI is actually guiding them there. That's quite impressive, considering the state villager AI has been in the past. So it looks like they are making their way back to the beds. Wonderful. Okay, well that at least is promising. That is kind of going to show that villagers might be a little bit more easy to control in future. But I think that's where we're going to wrap up today's episode. We will get a hang of some of the other professions and hopefully make a start on villager breeding in tomorrow's episode. But that's going to be it for tonight, folks. From me, the Montagues and the Capulets, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.